Hey, my name is Trent, and today we will look at iCharge together. iCharge is a semantic analysis grid that helps students to identify trends and patterns, um, usually among dissimilar items. Uh, it helps them to examine multiple concepts, themes, events, characteristics, even people at the same time uh, because of their relation to each other or their relation to the overall topic. Uh, the semantic analysis chart also helps students to observe or identify connections among those dissimilar items. Uh, it's, it's accomplished by constructing what we call a semantic feature analysis grid, and it helps them to um, see how a set of things are related to one another. Uh, it also causes them to analyze, deeply analyze the topics or the events. It also helps them to deeply analyze the topics. Um, we know that analyze means to dissect. So it breaks down each concept, or topic, event, person uh, into different criteria and then helps the student to observe or identify connections among those topics, events, and concepts. So to prepare for this, you just simply select a category that can be easily researched and it can, that contains characteristics that can be analyzed or that relate back to one another. Uh, for example, in this particular example, we have uh, seven cities listed on the left, and then we have some criteria at the top. Uh, the category here is selecting a city that is best suited for industry. And the criteria that we're using is availability to raw materials, proximity to markets, transportation facilities, bodies of water, natural and climate considerations, and then just other strategic considerations. This list of criteria is part two of the preparation. Uh, either you can form this list or you can conduct a discussion with your students and determine together what the best criteria, criteria is for that particular question. The third thing you want to do in the preparation phase is you want to phrase this or frame this task as a question. So the question here is, which city is best suited for industry based on the criteria that we have to research? So for, for the process, first thing you're going to have them do is well, you're going to define these, the, the criteria here, of course, so they know what they're looking for and briefly give some background on each, each topic or event that you have listed here. And then really the first part of it is for them to gather evidence um, for each topic, event, city, person, place that you have listed here. You want them to gather evidence for each criteria. Um, you can do this one of two ways. You can have them to put a plus or minus sign, plus meaning yes, minus meaning no, uh, in the space provided, which means that they do have, uh, let's say, Anchorage um, availability to raw materials. We know that Alaska has an abundance of materials, so you would put a plus sign there. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it is um, to summarize the evidence in this particular space. So they would write, after researching, they would write some of the materials that are available to Anchorage. So they would summarize in each, in each um, um, box. Uh, so for advanced students, it's better to have them summarize the evidence. It's much more rigorous than just writing a plus or minus sign. Um, for, it, for struggling students, just have them make a determination if that particular topic, event, city, people, place meets that criteria. And then plus means it does, minus means that it doesn't. After the um, analysis grid is completed, um, the next part of it is, is, is facilitating discussion, which is an essential part to this strategy. So have them discuss the, the items, have them discuss the evidence that they found and the research that they found. And to do that, most effectively, you're going to have to form a set of questions for them to go through as a group. And then after they're finished, you can conduct a discussion as a whole class and, and see what, what the groups concluded. Um, through, through a whole class discussion. At the end of completing the grid and conducting the discussion, so to conclude this activity, 
have students complete the I, I charge quick write, which is another essential part to the strategy. Uh, so to do that, they will just identify the trends and patterns that they recognized and then explain why those patterns exist. And finally, they conclude by writing their claim, their argument, the argument that they have formed based on the evidence that they have so closely and intently analyzed in the semantic analysis grid. To differentiate the strategy, have struggling students adjust uh, the number of categories. So you can change the criteria from five or six to two or three. Um, again, you can use yes or no instead of a summary of evidence, and you can provide examples for them to follow. For advanced students, you may increase the number of categories, have them summarize that evidence, uh, and then have them form their own criteria um, to examine the items in the list. So just to, to end, just a couple of more examples um, for this particular one. It's greatest movie of all time. And as you can see, the traits um, here are listed. Uh, and so you can use this to determine the greatest movie of all time. Another one that's content related is uh, the Cold War and who escalated the Cold War. So then you have traits over here and have them research each of these um, these items and uh, summarize their evidence um, and then look for patterns and trends and, and and then the last thing is to write a claim based on the collection of, of evidence. So the strategy is great for analysis. It's a great way to dissect um, multiple topics, events, people, places uh, and to reach a claim based on the evidence that is collected throughout the completion of the semantic analysis grid.